So in response, my offer to answer questions, Tim Lu Hima asked if I would give my ideas on gaining the blade. So here in this video, I'm going to discuss what I know of gaining the blade from the manuals, how I practice it, and reasons that you might do it. All right, so first, let's discuss the parts of the sword that are relevant to the game. You have the blade, of course. You have the true edge of the blade, and that's the cutting edge, what you would be aiming toward the ground when you're holding your hand in a normal position. You have this lower half of the blade, the strongest part, called the forte. You have the part that includes the point, which is called the debole. You also have the quian, specifically the bottom quian, and you have the guard, which can also come into play during the game. Now it also helps when you're thinking through a game to divide your blade into the stronger and weaker parts and to understand them. Some authors historically broke their blade or divided their blade into two pieces, as we said, the forte and the debole. Some three, some went four. I like Carranza's. Carranza divided the blade into the degrees of strength. Uh, the weakest being the one with the point here, and he numbered that number one. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the strongest was eight down here near the hilt. So one, two, three, four would be the debole, and then five, six, seven, eight would generally be the forte. So what is the game? A game is when you are controlling or constraining your opponent's blade, even if for a very brief time. In fact, a brief time is usually all we really get. So when I've gained my opponent's blade, I'm using the parts of my sword, the mechanical advantage of leverage, of gravity, the angular advantage of how I'm holding my sword or how I'm moving my body to constrain my opponent's options, to take away their direct line to me, and to force the game the way I want it to be. The Vienna Anonymous calls a game uh, shutting out your opponent's sword. To gain your opponent's blade, you should put more of your blade over less of their blade, and you want your true edge to aim at their blade. So I want to have more of my blade number wise over less of their blade, and effectively, I'm able to cut their blade with my true edge. Now, going back to the divisions of the blade, my one, two, three, four, I want one of my numbers to be over a lower number on my opponent's sword. So I want my three, say, over my opponent's two, or my four over my opponent's two or three. I want to have, again, more of my blade over less of theirs, and this division is a way of thinking through that. And reflecting on what Hepaferro and some others have said, I also don't want our blades to touch, necessarily. I want to float my blade over theirs. I don't want to, I think Giganti says, molest my opponent's blade. Now, to be clear, you can touch your opponent's blade, but you need to have a reason for doing so. It needs to be part of your tactics. I can pass information on to my opponent when I want to, when I choose to. So all that to say, it's not completely off the table, but when I'm gaining a blade, my default is to be floating over my opponent's blade, not to be touching it until I want to. Another thing that I teach is my blade and my bottom quian 
make this L, which I call a pocket, and I want to get my opponent's blade inside this pocket, inside this visual L. I don't want my queen end to be pointing off to the side because this now lays my flat against my opponent's blade. So to remember to get that true edge to them, I also think about I want them in this triangle formed by the L between my blade and my queen. So you can lay your four over their two all you want to, but if I haven't gotten my opponent's blade in this triangle formed, in this pocket, then I don't have the strength that I want because that means I'm flat and they can flex past my blade. So the combination of using these numbers and thinking about getting my opponent inside this pocket so my true edge is aiming at their blade is the combination you want for a good game. The Vienna Anonymous holds that you want to keep your opponent in presence, meaning you want your point to still be aiming at some part of their body or very close to it. So when I'm gaining on the inside, I'm crossing over their blade, again, putting them in this pocket, and my point is aiming at just on the outside of my opponent's sword shoulder. If I'm gaining on the outside, again, crossing over, putting in this pocket, and I'm aiming my point at my opponent's offhand shoulder. So I'm still in presence, I'm still threatening, I am covering over their blade, using gravity to my advantage, putting them in this pocket, but I'm still threatening. The Vienna Anonymous defines three types of game. The first type is the simple game. That is, when I have gained my opponent's blade, I'm aiming over their sword, I've gotten a higher number of mine over a lower number of theirs, but my opponent is still pointing at my body, so I'm still in their presence while they're in my presence as well. This is the simple game. The ideal game is a game done out of presence, so this is when I've gained my opponent's blade in the same way that we discussed, but I have stepped out of the line of my opponent's attack now. So there's no way that they can thr thrust a straight attack at me at all and hit me. This is the ideal gain according to Vienna Anonymous. The third type of gain is a beat. So I've temporarily, very briefly, taken control of their sword by knocking it out of the way. This is why I say that the gain is simply controlling the, the opponent's blade if very briefly. Now bear in mind, the Vienna Anonymous also says that we shouldn't use beats. You shouldn't lose control of your opponent's blade that way. So technically what I would say is your two games to think about are the simple game where I'm still aiming at my opponent and they're still aiming at me, or the game from out of presence where I've now gained my opponent's blade and they're aiming past me. 